guys. My name is Combs. What you're watching right now. What you're watching right now. Is another YouTube video. Today. We're going to be talking about which characters you should be leveling up once you get past level 70. It's pretty expensive, but I've made some interesting discoveries today. And I think that you're going to want to see them. And that's, that's what it's all about, baby. All right. I think this is all I got. Watch the video or else. Hope you guys enjoyed that intro. I haven't done a goofy one in a while. Uh, my green screen has you seen right through me. I'm not sure what's up with it today. Uh, settings are all out of whack. So this is what you get. We're talking about, like I said in the intro, characters that benefit the most from going to beyond level 70. And I didn't really think this was gonna be like a big deal until I leveled up uh, Ultron to level 71 today. And I noticed that he had a pretty solid jump in certain stats. And I just didn't realize, like his health didn't really change that much, his damage didn't change that much, his armor didn't change that much, but what did change a lot was his focus and resistance. They had uh, big jumps with their numbers here. So the focus was at 1700, his resistance was at 2800. So this went up by 300 each. Now, how relative is that to what it actually does in the game? I'm not sure, but 2000 focus and 3100 resistance is really, really high. I would be curious to know if these numbers translate for all characters. So if I go and find someone who applies a lot of debuffs, for example, maybe maybe I'm looking at Sabretooth and I say, all right, what's it take here? You know, his focus is at 1900 already. His resistance is low, but I imagine, you know, if we take him up, he'd get a lot. But imagine just, you know, say he gets 300 and that puts him at 2200. That seems like a really solid number to be at for uh, for your focus especially with all the bleeds that he applies so it's interesting it's something to consider so anyways what i'm getting at here i just wanted to talk about this because it's it's just a crazy it's a pretty significant jump i mean if we're imagining here you know as characters get from level 71 you know 70 to 75 like again all characters will have these bonuses but it seems like this is going to set them apart pretty significantly from characters that are below level 70 70 and below and i think that that's something to think to just talk about because in raids it makes sense because we see some level 75 characters in raids that could explain why they're constantly resisting things why they always seem to apply debuffs and we can never seem to apply them and vice versa and so on and so forth it could make sense if these characters are getting like a huge stat jump from these extra levels that we didn't know about. We didn't know that this was here. We didn't know this was a thing. But now we can see and we can recognize, you know, I wonder what this sort of thing means for characters like, I don't know, like could a high level team counter a low level team with Jessica Jones on it or Groot? Like, do they become outdated and inefficient when you're facing, if you have a level 70 defenders team? Would they become outdated if you face them with a level 75 team of maybe even potentially lower gear? You know, we don't know yet. It would be interesting to see like how, again, the resistance and focus stacks up, how it bounces out, of course. We know that it's different, right? So you get it from gear and, you know, so this one just gets health and that gets a bit of resistance. You know, this gets health damage focus. And it just really depends, you know, health damage, focus, armor, resistance. It's all, I mean, because it's in the stats, right? So, or it's in the gear, it's in gear, it's in red stars, it's in levels. It really is a, I guess, just an interesting concept. So I just wanted to point this out, wanted to share this with you guys today. And I just wanted to give you a quick tentative list of characters that I think would be best being leveled up. Now, this is obviously going to flow with the meta. I think like when you're looking at it, though, right? So you look at Ultron, you say, OK, well, yeah, you obviously want better stats to Ultron. But does he really matter when it comes to focus and resistance? I mean, yeah, his resistance, you definitely want up. But his focus really isn't that big of a deal, right? So he doesn't do any debuffs. I guess he does. He can cleanse with his basic, which then allows him to have that. But I do wonder how the focus and resistance also carries over into the minions. 
It's something I'm thinking about here, and I guess there's really no way to check, is there? But at level 71, you know, we can see, okay, clears positive effects, blah, blah, blah. There's obviously all the different ones, but we don't really know, right? So there's no way to know what does what or what's where or whatever, you know what I mean? So it's interesting. That's something I'm thinking about, thinking through, like, how does this affect the summons? If we could figure out a concrete answer on how the summons are affected by the levels, I mean, obviously... I believe that they just get more health. We don't really know what the differences are though. We don't know what the differences are gonna make on summons and everything else. Characters that I just tentatively think that you're probably going to want to be taking up. And again, this kind of goes with the meta because those are the characters that everybody uses. So it's like Phoenix, I think definitely wants to go up because even though her health pool is, you know, her health pool doesn't really matter. Her focus is great already. And, you know, I mean, she gets like huge bonus numbers for her focus when she's doing these attacks anyways. But having her health even higher, her damage even higher, I mean, she can just suck the life out of people. I mean, we already know all that. Uh, I mean, Ultron's a fine candidate, but doesn't really fit with a focus or resistance. I guess that's kind of the same with Phoenix. Like neither of them really fit with a focus or resistance kind of thought process. Um, and it just depends, I guess, on what you're using. So maybe there really is no list to make, you know, because it's gonna just depend on what you're using. Now maybe you say, okay, well, I don't know, maybe you like the defenders. The interesting thing with her, I mean, she can t she gets extra resistance and she already has high resistance. I mean, 9,000 <laughs> resistance. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty high. So it's hard to say if you would want to put anything more into this because you could get, okay, you could get another 10%, whatever. So it puts it up to 40% plus her 9,000 already. It probably doesn't matter to go beyond that, but maybe it does. You know what I mean? If you feel like you're not, things aren't working the way you want them to work. You know, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. It really does depend on people's rosters. Maybe you're using Pyro, right? So maybe you're still using Brotherhood for Arena. Maybe that's the kind of shard you're in right now. And so Pyro would be great because the higher focus that he has, the more burns and everything else or bleeds he can apply. So I think that's a good one too. I mean, you could also any tank character, you level them up you get more resistance, you know? And so I guess a better way to look at this, and this is me just, I guess, thinking out loud. Say you go to a team like, say you're running Brotherhood in Arena. You say, okay, well, which one of these characters am I wanting to take up to level 71 first? Because it's pretty expensive. It costs like 300,000. So maybe you look at it and you say, okay, which one do I want to do? Well, probably Juggernaut because he's the tank, right? So overall, he just gets everything. He gets extra health. Damage, armor, focus, resistance. But the main thing being resistance, if he can get more, that means debuffs aren't going to land on him. That means he's not going to be just, he's not going to be messed up by the other team. Like he's just going to be there and he's going to be an immovable object. Now you might be saying, well, I don't know. And you say, okay, well, the other candidate would probably be Pyro because then he'll be able to get those bleeds. Pyro or Sabretooth because they're going to get the bleeds because they inflict debuffs. That's the thing you want to be thinking about is people who inflict debuffs or people who you don't want wanting to get cleansed. Mystique wouldn't really matter. And I don't really think that Magneto would matter because his debuffs pretty much always hit. Now, it would be interesting to know, like with this attack, it doesn't always manage to clear everything. So it would be interesting if you level him up, got the focus a little higher, what difference that might make. It's really hard to tell. I mean, you don't know. It's obviously a roll of the dice, but maybe it would make it more consistent. But I mean, essentially, I mean, I would say look at your team and you don't necessarily want to just dive in and be like, oh yeah, Juggernaut, got to put him up. I mean, excuse me. Oh yeah, Magneto, gotta put him up because he's the leader. It's like, well, maybe not necessarily. Maybe Juggernaut, you know what I mean? And that's just, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Again, that's one simple example. You use any team. I mean, you know, say you're doing Fantastic Four. Well, if these were all at level 70, you got the T4s and everything that you want, you probably want to take a uh, thing because if you put any of these other ones, they end up with more health, then it's going to just mess up the entire team because uh, Invisible Woman is going to stealth them instead of him. So it's interesting. Uh, you definitely want, you got to think about stuff like that. So kind of just, how do you want to level them up? How do you want to do it? I think it's important, uh, to consider all of these factors. Um, I just did Ultron cause I didn't even really realize that there was going to be a stat that uh, like a significant stat boost. Also, I mean, it's Ultron, right? So you got to do him. He's the best character. He's the best solo individual character in the game right now. So I was just like, oh, okay, got to do that. So that's kind of my thoughts, guys. I would love to hear what you think down in the comments below. This is a pretty simple video, pretty straightforward. I uh, just kind of wanted to give my thoughts on the stat boost from the leveling. So uh, let me know what you guys think, who you're going to level up first or who you already have leveled up first. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. I'm interested to see what the rest of the cost is. 
um, as it was around 300,000 gold to take a character from 70 to 71, I'm thinking it's going to get pricey to get to 75. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure to uh, smash that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next one.